Did you know that most neat freaks could not watch the World Cup final? What? It was too messy. <laughs> it was too messy. Get it? No, explain it to me. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions to a corn. I'm Jewish. Are you really? Yeah. That always confuses people. I can't wait for people to be confused by that statement. You can follow us on Instagram. I'm going to tweet out for you. Stay content. Thanks to Patreon. for the button. Did you watch the World Cup final? No. That's, I saw I saw the highlights. That sucks for you, man. I heard it was one of, one of, if not the greatest World Cup final ever. Went down to the penalty kicks. And I saw I saw all of the highlights. And I saw the announcer crying. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I only watch Yankees baseball. That's the only sport I really follow anymore. Because he sucks. No, that's not true. And I also like to watch UFC fighting. But even like Dallas Cowboys in the NFL, I don't give a, I don't care anymore. Well, that's super interesting. Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> Why are you sorry you're hungry? You're a human being. No. Nah, no, not, I'm not really. I'm not. It's so true. Did you watch the final? Mm hmm. Wow. I watched a lot of the World Cup this year. Yeah. Um, anyway, but I love football or soccer, who, who, you know. Yeah. It's the same thing. Anyways, today we got a uh, Renveer Singh answers fans' questions. So this is from Film Companion. We reacted to her interview with him mm -hmm. near Jai Shai Jojo or whatever that film was called. Yes. Apparently, he also did a segment where he asked, the, the audience asked him questions. Yes, I have so. a question. Why don't you come talk to us? Yeah, not much of a hawk. Yeah. Love you, Renview. Uh, anyways, but uh, so that's what this is. So, here we are. I'm going to open it up to the audience. It said actor and chameleon. <laughs> Your ba your bhabi is in Bangalore anyways, I have nowhere to go. <laughs> and I'm not shooting a film right now, so honestly, there is no place I'd rather be. Okay, and call out their name and they'll ask you a question. Okay, G. Where about Vijay Patel? Where? Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. It's an honor speaking to you. My question to you is this. A uh, few years back, I watched your movie, Bajrao Mastani, and just five minutes into the movie, I was like, whoa, best decision of my life. Hmm. Have you experienced <laughs> such whoa moment watching any movie recently? Which scene was it? Like the whole movie. Like, I felt like you are the Maratha warrior, like the blood of the Maratha warrior flows into you. Um, sometimes, you know, I must tell you, when you're playing these characters who you know are historical characters and have such reverence in their community, it becomes the onus comes on you. You you have to you have to really you know do justice to it. Yeah, it takes you try. yeah, and yeah. Uh, because it means a lot to a lot of people. Uh, so five minutes in, that was probably by the entry. Pe aapne bo bola hoga. Yes, sir. Chita ki chaal, baaz ki nazar aur baaz ki. I'll tell you funny stuff from that day. The question though. So this was <laughs> the early years of Bajira, so it wasn't, I didn't even have a stubble on my takla, it was just like pure takla. So Sanjay Bazali looks at the monitor, first thing in the morning, he's like, your, your face is looking like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> looking like an anda. <laughs> I think we'll take your back shot first. Anda, camera anda, 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 anda. Exactly. Really? Yeah, and yeah, then that, that dialogue. With uh, now that I look at the film back, I feel like I could have chopped that pause. You know, I feel like I watch it. I'm like, thoda kam pause, thoda kam ho sakta tha, sir. Uh, so, so it was uh, it was a proper dialogue, dialogue, huh? 
it was like there on paper and you can see it it's popping out to you it's like yeah hua die law right you know yeah yeah chita ki chaal baaz ki nazar aur bajirao ki talwar pe sandeh nahi that must be another line i think he forgot the question no, it, <laughs> what's the rest of it i had a warm moment sir i watched rrr okay. recently <laughs> there we go <laughs> and i had dozens of woe moments it was like it's the three hours of just woe <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's mr rajamouli cinema for you it just like it gets you out of your seat mm-hmm. you can barely even sit um i absolutely loved it when i got out of my seat the first time in rrr was that sequence where they're trying to save the boy uh and jab hi do hero ka hath aisa aata na yeah <laughs> so yes, RRR, war movie, and if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. Yeah, agreed. On an Oscar film. Asia Panchal. Hi, hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Your question is uh, that if you are given any chance to recreate any iconic role of your favorite from world cinema. which role it can be mm uh wow i have a couple that come to mind immediately but i'd first like to invite suggestions from the audience sir aapne actually mere dil ki baat bol li he just feeds off of audience he loves audience. people yeah <laughs> that was it that was my first instinct yeah when you asked the question asia the first thing that popped in my head was woo scarface you'd be very good thank you <laughs> you know we actually made scarface in hindi cinema a couple of times actually you know versions agna pass for this pretty yeah. much scarface and master is pretty much scarface and i love all three so yeah scarface comes to mind immediately uh i think there's something just just so oh my god it's just something so attractive about tony montana you know yeah kata rajas <laughs> I think you'd also be amazing as John Travolta in Saturday Night. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> That would yeah, work. I'm on. Hello? I'm on. I'd cast Karan Johar to direct it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The one that comes to mind is The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh shit. <laughs> so these are a couple I'd like to do. Um Joker. <laughs> Joker, Gladiator. and to be super honest uh the joker i i really like um, i definitely in the process of creating khilji watched the dark knight a few times uh in the process of creating bajira i watched it gladiator a few times uh so there's hmm. definitely something there which those That's interesting. wonderful artists have put out there that that is so infectious that you can learn from draw from um but i would love to do my own version of scarface and i would love to do my own version of the wolf of wall street nice okay last question thank you last three questions <laughs> yash dhabalia hi ma'am <laughs> nice to meet you sir ma'am Uh, so there have been many moments in your movies that have been very special. But what is that one scene in the past ten years for you? That after the director said cut, you just went back to your vanity and you just felt good about that moment that you have reached a point. Ramila. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah, huh? you know. <laughs> there are often times where cut is called and. you can't immediately switch off from what was just happening if you're really present and in the moment and then cut is called and it it kind of disturbs you in a way mm-hmm. it kind of throws you off you're like oh okay and you're not still ready to let go of that feeling that you're carrying so sometimes it spills over um and sometimes not comfortable feelings 
uh, as a performer, you have to cultivate this habit of being comfortable in that discomfort. So mm. even after a cut is called, if you're performing a sort of emotionally testing or difficult scene, it will still continue. And you got, you have to live that, you know. Um, but uh, put in another context, Ram Leela, like the lady mentioned, uh, sometimes you just get lost, you know. Like uh, I remember this one instance uh, where Ram and Leela are... Uh, They are lost in each other uh, in a very passionate lip lock. And I didn't want it to stop. And literally, boing, boing, boing. because everything on Mr. Banzali's film happens for real, very, very, you know, uh, it's almost like there are very little visual effects, you know, it's like everything is short. It's like, so we were on. Uh, uh, the bed in this lip lock and literally in the scene that lip lock is disturbed by a brick coming through the window. A whole brick. Now literally on set where Deepika and I are performing and literally there is a brick thrown through a window. Oh, shit. You know, it shatters the glass and everything. But in the first take, the Deepika and I were... So locked. And were so lost <laughs> that... We didn't the even notice the brick. We ah, didn't care. Ah, ah. <laughs> These kidding. two are still at it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. That's when Mr. Bansali knew. He was like, Here <laughs> And at that point, they were married. Sometimes you, yep. you get lost. Um, oftentimes, I walk back to the van and uh, my closest aid, my lifeline, my backbone, Koshal, who is witness to all the chaos and madness that happens behind the scenes. Um, he's my closest man. And he gets to see it because he 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 will he'll be with me by my side. I go back to my space and uh, I'm still reeling from what's happened. Uh, it used to happen during Padmavat a lot um, that you I have no control over it. I'm so immersed in it in the moment that coming out of it becomes a task. Uh, so oftentimes I go back to the vanity van and and it's still continuing. And then you know you do something to something else to distract yourself to come out of it or something um but but yeah oftentimes i don't i don't look back and i'm like wow I, it's not like the shortcut is called and i'm like wow kya shot diya <laughs> maine you know it's yeah. not like it's not like that uh but oftentimes i'm so lost that it takes some time to get get out of the shot happened on jaish bhai as well um and there are sometimes when when cut is called and then I find myself, it happened once during Dil Dharat Me Do, I, I can't remember when else, but um, Baji Rao, um, like cut is called and and you're holding so much emotion, cut is called and then you just, it just comes pouring out, you know, it's like I go to the side and I'm bawling, like mm -hmm. literally, like zor zor se crying, like, you know, not that's not what was happening in the scene, you just holding that emotion for this context of the scene you're holding it you're holding it you're holding it then when cut is called it just poof, it just comes out so have there been instances where Zoya is taking me to a corner and she's holding me while I'm like ah, <laughs> ah, ah. it's like crying like a baby like bawling uh so yeah it's uh it's but that's that's it. I love it this is this is this is what uh, being a performing artist uh, means, you know. It's I, I actually love and I cherish those those moments when I've been so present and uh, really lived, you know, with some moment of truth between action and cut. Those are those are signs of a performance going well. And that's why he's such a good actor. Yep. All right. <laughs> Who do we have? Okay, last one, Ranveer. The second last one, correct, correct. <laughs> and Saad. <laughs> what if your last name was Faramosh? What would you do? <laughs> I don't get that joke. <laughs> me neither. Explain it to me. <laughs> it sounds like a, a possible Parsi surname, you know, Faramosh. You know, I, I get to hear that a lot, but it's actually Asan. Oh. Asan. Yeah, yeah, it's an Arabic word, which means hmm. Which best, means? Best. Best? Yeah, Asan. That's how they call it. Best? Yeah, best. <laughs> like, what? 
आपके पेरेंट्स ने कोई गुंजाइश ही नहीं छोड़ी काफी उम्मीद थी ग्रेट नेम ब्रो एसन सर माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज आपने काफी इंटरव्यूज में बोला था कि सिम्बा का कैरेक्टर काफी चैलेंजिंग था आपके लिए राइट मुझे ये जानना था कि कौन सा ऐसा सीन है जो आपके लिए बहुत ज्यादा चैलेंजिंग था और क्यों था इन स्पेसिफिक समथिंग अबाउट हाउ चैलेंजिंग दैट रोल वाज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फ्रॉम स्टार्ट टू फिनिश सिम्बा वाज जस्ट अम चैलेंजिंग टू पिच बिकॉज़ दैट्स प्रॉपर मेन स्ट्रीम मसाला द वॉल्यूम टर्नड अप ऑन एवरीथिंग इट्स लाइक फ्रंट फुटेड बॉल्स आउट लाइक इट्स जस्ट लाइक इट्स द काइंड ऑफ सिनेमा वी वर डिस्कसिंग अर्लियर नाउ टू पिच दैट correctly is a great big challenge because it's so it's such a fine line yeah. you know you can fall at any time it can become too much any time and there was one such scene i've never ever said this before but there was one such scene in the initial part of the shooting of simba which sir felt that was it was he was like this broad this i thought was just too loud you know uh it, it we can temper it a bit temper no pun intended uh, uh you know it's uh, there was one such scene which by the way didn't make the cut um also partly due to it wasn't really required in the narrative it was like fat we were chopping out the fat by was um but those are ek especially challenging um because like i said it's a fine line to make uh that genre to make a performance within that genre to make that kind of performance still feel authentic is a challenge because it is a very fine line that you're walking in terms of pitching and pitching is more than 70 80% of just about achieving um you know the journey into any world of any film as when once you get jaise jaise ki hum hamare film makers bolte the they call it the sur sur kaisa tha sur kaisa hai how the pitch um once you achieve that is more than half the work done but achieving that in simba was very challenging because <coughs> when i watch those types of films i've always felt that this can be better that this can be more effective this can be more authentic you don't it's not like anger to sadness to it's not it's not like Extremes. that they yeah. you can still put in a performance within that genre which when simba came out i was very happy very proud and very grateful that that was recognized it was one masala film that was actually got great reviews um you know and like 3 3 3 and a half stars on an average like that was amazing uh for a film like simba is proper as mainstream it's a it's a rohit shetty and team production you know it's like it's a rohit shetty film but still within that to get to put in a performance to make that film um effective because it's simba it's first frame to last frame you know there throughout it's in and as simba so you know when to be that goofy yet that serious mm-hmm. you're still dealing with the subject matter which is no 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 joking matter but in the initial half of the film you're still this larger than life colorful goofball uh but then to have that switch over mm. and then to become that guy who stands up and you know to pitch those dramatic scenes there were there were many many aspects to simba there were the comic scenes there were the the the, the same guy is doing all this he's all doing almost slapstick comedy yet doing that interval scene yet going into the courtroom in the third half and having that uh, you know have doing those scenes so to so to pitch to construct that performance the goofiness the change over the seriousness to bring it all together to still make it a cohesive and effective performance was a big challenge so therefore i if i have to rate my own work simba for me is the highest rated because mm. that was that pitching that is actually the biggest challenge mm. and it doesn't get talked about you talk about performance you talk about right. often times instinctively people will say maybe perhaps hilji gali boy or you know what uh, lutera or you know stuff like that bajira these are the ones that come up but the real marks go to a performance for me go to a performance like simba that's the tough stuff and if you can do it high marks <laughs> that's why you that's why you call you chameleon thank you <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the last page.
श्रुति वर्गीज Hi um my question is um Pick your shirt. if you only had one opportunity to tell only one story either behind the camera or in front of the camera what would it be Great question um I actually did write a couple of scripts so I have stories to tell <laughs> Wait a right <laughs> um not ready yet to be honest uh i think it takes a lot of courage to be a filmmaker to be a writer heck yeah it's mm. like being an actor is super convenient right it's not it's uh, it's not mine <laughs> <laughs> i'm just the tool just the tool um it's true. but it takes a lot of courage to have that degree of responsibility when you're creating material um so so yeah i did write a couple of scripts in fact there was one i wrote as the final project in script writing class in university and uh the entire 6 months process led up to this one thing that you know, a proper 130 page brown script and i remember the the guy um the professor he called me into his office on the final day and he said i've been teaching this class for 30 years this is the best script i've ever read wow and, wow that's amazing and he said to me i will be surprised if you can't go out there and get this made immediately He gave me a A plus plus. Wow, that's amazing. Where is that script? Uh, that script is buried. <laughs> I'll never make it. Uh, only because I think that that story has been told. You know, it's very difficult to write scripts. It's yeah. almost like every story is to is every narrative, literally that's that's worth telling has been told, and you're just making versions of it, and uh, that's it's not far from the truth. um so that i made that in like our run you know what that was like 2007 or something um and then i wrote another one and um i actually narrate it often times to uh filmmakers to get their feedback to see what do they think do they really think this has any because it was a wild idea uh i want to be lit but um it is it's uh, got a lot of black humor uh and uh, one day i'll make it one day i will but i i have to master up the courage to reach there um if i could tell if i could direct one movie though i would love to make and tell the mahabharat <laughs> that is one story that must be realized on celluloid you know on i really feel like somebody has to make it you know we had the tv series cult tv series of course uh but the mahabharat has got to be made it's just waiting to be made into a movie into like a trilogy or even like a seven part six part seven part mega cinema experience that that will that will blow the lid off any cinema lover watcher maker in the world you know mahabharat is just waiting to be made into a film yeah. and there are so many prominent and eminent film personalities that have dabbled in actually realizing this great dream and i think it's around the corner and i hope it happens i hope i can be some part of it and uh, uh, they have their time if they don't make it in the next 20 years i'll make it. <laughs> I hope somebody makes it and you play Karna my favorite character right you the, heard it your first <laughs> the good guy on the wrong side good guy on the wrong side i like it layers baby give it to me <laughs> <laughs> well i have to I have to end by telling you that first interview you did with me you talked about being a director uh-huh. and you said i definitely i'm going to direct one day it's my it's the ultimate dream and you said the thing is you probably won't like what i made <laughs> I don't I'll, that's I'll change that. I'll, I will change it I'll too. I'll go back. I think you're going to love it. I think so too. I think you love it. Yeah. I think uh yes, it will definitely have uh that big screen spectacle value. As it but should. but in the uh, the emotion will be all there. Uh I'm also growing as a man of cinema. Uh so so slowly my courage is building up to write and to direct and uh, uh it'll be uh It'll be a while. I'm really enjoying the acting stuff now, and it's keeping me super busy. And I'm extremely grateful for all these wonderful opportunities. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that that tree is going to get cut. 
or when the when the each will get too much then i'll definitely scratch it excellent 13 15 saal ke baad 13 15 saal ke baad ke baad aap waise hi aap aise hi dikhengi hum sure main main aur bhi hot ho jaunga ha thoda white white aa jayega All the better, no, to direct with. Yeah, yeah, and I'll get those director vibes, big, big daddy, sullen eyes. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll play the part. You will. Yeah. You yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. Just yell at people all day, break spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, we will enjoy what you do on screen, ladies and gentlemen. I have to stop. They must have a hard out. Hard. Yeah. Is it here? Yeah, they must have a hard out, or else why wouldn't they let Renvir just <laughs> uh, just keep going as long as he wants? They no, probably they had the, to the, absolutely. The venue probably has a hard out time yeah. that they that yeah. they need this. Uh, out. I find it so interesting. Obviously, I loved it. Love watching Ren, listen to Renvir talk um, about his process, about cinema, about acting, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I love the fact that most people, when you think of Renvir, thinks he has no shame. No, right. no kind of boundaries at all. But he said, "I'm not brave enough to direct or write," which, like, you'd never think Renvier wouldn't be confident enough to basically right. do whatever he wants. He, sure. the man has the most confidence right. most people have ever seen. Yeah, but it's it's a different beast. Writing, it, he's he's absolutely correct. It is it is nerve wracking. I mean, the, the only things that are probably more nerve wracking than that would probably be like stand up comedy or something like. Right and well, front. yeah. But you're writing that. You're as still well. writing that. That you're still a writer. Yeah. When you're doing stand up, so writer director, it's yours. Yeah, and I would agree. I would say it's probably the and I, I <sighs> writing a screenplay. Yeah. Because there's That's so yeah. many. Because you've written plays, obviously. Yeah, writing a play is a much easier task, at least for me. I've attempted, and maybe it would be different if I was attempting to write something from scratch. Because, like, I've tried to turn Barbarian into a screenplay, and any time I've tried to do it, it just doesn't come out. And I've always thought that's because whoever would direct it might contribute to the flow of the screenplay, or I don't know. I just know there's so many things with the way screenplay is written versus stage play. The it. it it's a, it's ext- and when you watch shows for like friends for example huh? you you have no place to judge it huh? have you watched it i've watched it in his sandwich you haven't watched it so it's like it's like saying that food sucks and you haven't tasted it i i have uh the writing on that show season after season as well as everybody loves raymond Garbage. i'm talking situational comedy Just terrible. shows how difficult it is to write good comedy mm. for a, a show where you're only writing for 23 minutes of television yeah. week after week after week after week after week is is unbelievable. And yes, not so much for the writing because writers also get the benefit of the doubt in ways that actors do per se and that they get to kind of step back and go, not mine. It all falls on the director. Oh, yeah. it's a the direct- director gets all the credit or and all blame. the blame. Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's uh... It's a director's medium. Film is a director's medium. 100%. So and, and then writers everybody else like is actors get to go, yeah, I may have sucked, but the whole thing isn't my yeah. fault. <laughs> directors are probably, I don't want to say the most important, because every job is important in film, but it's their medium, followed by the writers, followed by actors, yeah. and everybody else offshoots of that. Yeah, it is. The director but, is the king. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's it's super interesting to hear him talk about that. And, all, I mean, it kind of goes into like the fact that he thinks his most challenging role was Simba, mm. which is a comedy role. Mm-hmm. We've often said it. Comedy is harder well, than dr- drama. The comedy aspect of it, but also for him, which is completely unique to Indian acting oh, yeah. and Indian Masala, film, yeah. is his desire for truth and being in the moment in that kind in of a film, film yeah. is commendable and difficult. Oh, yeah. To find real justification for those moments, that's something I'd love to have a conversation with him about in terms mm-hmm. of how how to accomplish such a thing because mm-hmm. there have been scripts i've read and realized never going to happen there's no way i'm going to be able to embody this character and enjoy the process or make the character believable because it's so just 
yeah. beyond the realm, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's always lovely to... <laughs> when he talked about uh, Sanjay Lubin's <laughs> side, and they were just like... The making brick comes out through or, the window, and they're just not and stopping. He, brick comes in, he's bricked up. You know, <laughs> it, we're all bricked up. <laughs> it's so obvious. That's one of the most wonderful things about Ram Leela, is you see the love story of those two happening right before your eyes it's really it's really wonderful you know, it's something we always talk about he's always genuine in his performances he is um, he wants so badly to do well and be a true artist yes and is he really is um but I was and, and again we've said this before i think you guys especially those of you who don't appreciate him have yet to see I think as he as he ages and has accomplishments and experiences, he's going to dive into certain roles and characters, both as an actor and I, I really think he'll direct, and God willing, 30 years from now, mm -hmm. I think his best work is, as far as elevative artistry that is really contributory to world cinema, uh, he hasn't even scratched the surface yet. Yeah. Hasn't yeah. even scratched it. I agree. Um, and it's quite exciting to uh, see what he's going to do next. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think the next is obviously Circus is next, and then I think it's Karen Joe are showing with Alia. I think so. I think that comes out, yeah, at maybe February or March. And boy, oh boy, I don't know how that's one of the things I don't know how transparent they could be about that by choice or by whatever. I don't know how he and Topeka manage their, their, their life together because their life is even more full than even. <sighs> Priyanka and Nick, yeah. I, I just, I can't fathom how difficult it is for them to ensure that their relationship is intact and good and strong yeah. because they're so in demand, the both of them. Yeah. I and mean, she was just at the World Cup. World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, fantastic interview. Please let us know what the uh, other Renvier videos, uh, even though we could- And interviews. Interviews. Uh, we'd love to interview him. <laughs> Doesn't no no surprise there. I wish I just had a little black book like everybody thinks I do of just like it was like take his interview and I'm like right you know how difficult it is. <laughs> Usually you don't get to talk to the actor directly. No, uh, until like after the interview and they might give you their number. Right, but before it is an incredibly difficult process of talking to their managers to um, production houses. And there's that... been there's been interviews where we've been in contact with people for yeah. years. Yeah. But the interview didn't happen until years later. Yeah, I'm still in contact with people that... Yeah, there's still people that if we told you who we're in contact with, you'd be very, very excited. But why should we tell you that? Because... We don't know when it's going to happen. <laughs> we, may, we may never get to interview them. Yeah, who knows? Um, but we try. So just know, we try. Um, anyway, so... And uh, what should we our next Renvier? Uh, yeah. I think the next Renvier one, um, at least I think it would be his first one, which is him and Anushka. Um, it's his first film. Yeah. But that might be good for like romance month, right? Because I believe it's a, a rom-com, kind of a rom-commy thing, um, yeah. kind of a thing. But you guys can let us know uh, down below.